Welcome back to my channel, Learn Smart Coding. In this video, we're going to see Microsoft Azure Developer develop solutions with Blob Storage. This is part of AZ204 certification and let's take a look. Azure Blob Storage is Microsoft cloud-based object storage solution. There are five parts in this section. This video will teach you the core concepts of blob storage and how to interact with blob storage using dotnet sdk and how to implement data archiving and retention let's see azure blob storage overview azure blob storage is microsoft massive scaling object storage for the cloud in that object storage you can store unstructured data like text files and binary files you can store files like html json file log files images videos zip files pdf files and many more and also you can store virtual disk for virtual machines you can access the data in blob storage via the azure storage rest api over http and https however https is the recommended option this means you can access the file from any devices also you can access the blob storage from the azure portal also from the command line using Azure PowerShell or CLI. To access Blob Storage from your application, you can use the Azure Storage Client Library that wraps the REST API calls. Client Library exists for several platforms like .NET, Java, Python, Node.js, and many more. Let's understand the storage accounts, containers, and blobs. So in order to use the Blob Storage, you first need to create an Azure Storage account. For storage account, we must first define a name, and this name should be unique across all the Azure storage accounts. That's because the name is part of the URL, so it has to be unique. This is how the name looks. Beside the name being unique, the storage account must be within three and 24 characters long. It must contain only lowercase letters and numbers. You can create blob containers like images, videos, photos, once account is created. This blob container is like kind of a root folder for your blob, and there is no limitation for the containers. So you can create how much ever you want. Now, if you see the structure, this is the structure of the blob storage with storage account, containers and blobs. It is not possible to create a subfolder in a blob container. That's because the blob storage is a flat object storage, but you can always name your blobs with path graphics, like for example, uh, design, photos, images, and then under that, you can always upload some images. We will see those things in the demo. Come, let's first create the storage account and upload some blobs back on the portal. So you can create the storage account by clicking the storage account here, or you can search the storage account here, or you can always go here and look for the storage account. So let's click on the storage account. I'm going to click on create. So this will take me to the page where I need to fill up certain information to create the storage account. And this is similar to how you created other resources. So you need to select the subscription and I'm going to select the resource group. So I selected the resource group as a new one, LSE Learn Smart Coding Storage RG. And then you need to give the unique name here. If you see, learn is something that which is already taken. That is what we saw. So we chose a storage account name, which is unique. And then I also chose the nearest region. And here the performance is based on two things, standard and premium. Standard is magnetic disk and premium is SSD disk. And for our demo and for most of the cases, standard disk is recommended. Let's leave the redundancy as geo redundant storage. You have other option to choose. For now, we can use the geo redundant storage. Or this is just a demo, so I'm going to use the locally redundant storage. So let's go to the next step, advanced step, and I'm going to explain you a couple of important pieces here, and then the rest of the things I'll explain in the next clip. So if you take a look at the advanced step. Uh, you just leave all the things as default and if you come to the blob storage there are two access tier hot and cool i'll explain you what is hot and cool hot is less costly than cool hot is like you can access it so frequently cool is kind of archiving thing so we'll go with hot which is default and if you go to the networking by default the connectivity method is public and points all network if you have to choose for a particular network to access your blog you can always choose as public network and then you provide the ip address or you can provide the private and it is only applicable for you. So let's go with the default public and uh, let's leave all the other things as default. Let's quickly go and create. I clicked on review and create all the validation passed. I can hit on create. It's getting deployed. All right, the resource has been created. I'm going to click on go to resource and on this dashboard page, if you scroll down further, you can see we are on the dashboard of the storage account and you can see under this data storage, you have something called containers and containers. If you click, 
we can create containers but before that if you see these are the metadata information for your storage account that you just created so this is the resource group and all the information is here okay let's create con containers now i can click on the new container i'm going to provide a name here sample and i'm going to create so the container has been created and if you click on the container you can now see you're on the container blade and i can click on the upload to upload the file so here i'm going to select the file so i'm going to select the index file and click on upload the file got uploaded now what i wanted to show you was i'm going to click on this upload file again select the logo but now if you expand this advanced tab here you can see the block type which we will see shortly so i'm going to choose the block block i'm going to keep all the rest of the things as default here this is the virtual directory that you can upload so i wanted to upload my logo inside a designer folder so i typed designer and then the image will go and upload inside the designer so i'm going to click on upload you can see here you can see here a designer folder is displayed on click of that you can see the logo that we uploaded inside the designer all right now let's click on the logo now if you click on the url copy to clipboard and i'm going to open up the new tab i opened up a new tab and entered the url of the file here and you can see the resource not found you received so this is because by default your blobs are private they are not publicly accessible so what should we do come let's see about the authorization so before we jump on to the authorization let's container and the storage account using azure cli and azure powershell this is the command that you will use to create using azure cli and azure powershell and whatever is inside the bracket they are all optional so if you don't provide location as you can and kind it will take the location from the resource group location and other things are all default standard underscore r-a-g-r yes means it's read access geo redundant storage and we used by default it's storage v2 that's why the storage v2 so those are all options we got by default they will be taken into account similarly for power cell you have to provide all the things except the kind kind is again a default one which will take as storage v2 come let's see how to authorize the blob so authorization so how to authorize a request to blob storage there are four parts that you can do one is the shared key storage account key which is called a connection string based access the next one is the shared access signature sas which we will see shortly you can also authorize using your azure active directory and you can also set your blobs or the container which means the entire blobs inside the container to an anonymous public read access you don't need any authentication for such mechanism come let's take a look i'm back on the portal i'm on the designer local png file here if you see there are a couple of tabs and one of the tab is called generate sas which we saw shared access signature so if you click on that here is the thing so here are the metadata of that particular file here you can see what is the signing key the read permission or the write permission delete permission all the permissions here let's keep for a moment as read permission you can also set a start and the expiry time so within this time period the blobs will be allowed to view after the expiry of the blob timing the blob will not be allowed to be accessed now what we can do is we can also provide a particular ip to be accessing this blob but let's keep it simple what i'm going to do is i'm going to generate the sas token on the url click on this button you got the token and you got the sas url this is a complete url and this is the token to access the blob so let's copy this token and go back to our file which is already open in the next tab just append with the question mark with what you have copied and here you go now i'm able to access the logo jpg file i can see my logo now if i remove this shared access signature key and enter again we will get 404 which means we don't have access now what we are going to do is let's go back to the portal and close this one now we are on the path where we have uploaded the local file so next to the upload there is something called change access level click on that as i said by default it is private now if you click on this there are two more types one is blob anonymous read access for blobs only so which is basically we're going to select and the third one is the container level so if you select container level all the blobs inside the container so our container is called sample anything that you upload inside the sample container will have full access so for now we're going to do 
deep block and say ok access level is granted it will take a couple of seconds to navigate with this access and uh, what we will do let's go back to the tab and refresh right without the shared access signature because i'm changing this to a public read access only i am able to view this folder and the file now if you come back to the url and after the sample sample is nothing but a container put a question mark and say comp is equal to list so this will list all the files inside the container right now we are seeing 404 now let's go back to the portal click on the access level and change it to container access granted let's refresh this page all right if you remember we had two files uploaded one is the designer file and one is the index file so i can copy the index file here and hit on that and here you go i can see my html which was uploaded here now let's take a look at the different blob types so if you look at the diagram the blob types there are three types block blob append blob and page blob basically block blobs are stored as blocks so images logos which are like static not the contents are not changing are preferably stored in the block blob and if you see an example for append blob they are typically error logs so if you take a look at the error logs error log is something that when error happens the logs are appended to the same file so for that we can use append blob so for the virtual machine disk we can store this in the page blob okay now the next one is the storage account kinds so you should know some concept of different accounts that we already have it in the issue so if you look at the diagram there is something called legacy so when it earlier started it started with blob storage which had only the blob and then it started with the storage general purpose v1 so that has the blob file queue table and these two together are called legacy and the latest one which is recommended as the storage v2 general purpose v2 that has the blob file queue table you can always upgrade from the legacy to the the latest one like from v1 to v2 however they are permanent move and you cannot change back there are a lot of new features added in the storage v2 which is not available in v1 however when uh, if your project already has v1 probably you all started earlier so you can always upgrade it to v2 and as per the recommendation it is always good to go with v2 unless you really have a, a strong reason to choose v1 now coming back to two different uh, performance thing we have standard performance and the premium performance so standard is magnetic drives and the premium is the solid drive drive and in premium not everything is available so if you look at the premium you have the blob under blob you have page type alone which is stored for the virtual machine hard disk and then uh, for the block blob storage you have block and append and you have file storage you don't have queue or table in the premium and if you see the standard you have everything in the standard uh, and when you created a storage account you would have seen the replication strategy so the replication strategies for the different performance like standard and the premium and this is what it is so based on what you choose you have lrs grs so lrs stands for local redundant storage and grs the geo redundant storage RA is read access geo redundant and Z denotes the zone. So I'll tell you at a high level of what is the difference. Local redundant storage is basically one data center where three copies are made and geo redundant storage is more than one data center where the copies are made. And uh, so basically if during a disaster, if uh, one data center particularly went off, you are going to lose everything. That's why uh, it is preferable based on the need it is a geo redundant storage or the zone redundant storage and one thing you should keep in mind zone redundant storage is not available in every region you should always check for which region it has and if it is available for your region you can choose that that's it for this demo and uh, in the next demo we will take a look at how to create the blob containers using the azure.net sdk i hope you enjoyed this video thank you Thanks for watching. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe my channel, like it, share it, comment it and never forget to click on the bell icon.